Hey everyone, George from J Bakes Machines here. In this video I'm going to demonstrate the bellows that I'm making for the automaton whistling bird mechanism. So in the last video I walked you through uh, the mechanism here that I've been building uh, with the simple pin winding. Puts power into the main spring. On off switch in the gear train. Fan governor to get the speed relatively stable. But then the different cams, bottom cam for the whistle, top cam for the bellows. However, to feed the whistle, that's where this bellows then comes in. So the bezel, bellows itself is made up in um, four different sections. So this bottom section here is what I call the whistle chamber. The top section here is a uh, air reservoir. And then this middle two sections is where the air is pulled in and also then forced down. So I'll walk you through how it works. Um, so there's a series of rubber valves. So there's two rubber valves in the chamber here. There's one valve in this first section. There's also a hole in the back here, which is what then feeds the air into this valve. There's then a valve in this middle section and the air for that comes through this little elongated hole here. And then there is also in the top, there's another valve. And then this hole here, there's actually, um, you need a pressure release um, for this reservoir just in case it gets too much air. So basically there's just a, a plate, just a little plate that will sit on the top here. Just imagine that. And then when this gets to a certain height, it basically just acts like a pivot. It'll hit, hit the pillar on the actual mechanism and then that will then pivot that up and then allow the air to escape. So I'll walk you how it works. So when it's at rest, uh, no air in the chamber, in that first upward stroke, what it will be doing is it will be filling, um, filling this chamber with air through this hole. Then on that down stroke, it's actually gonna do two things. It's gonna force the air that's in here through that hole that I mentioned up the back out through this rubber valve, but at the same time as it's coming down, it's actually gonna be pulling air in through here and then filling this chamber through that rubber valve. Then on the next upward stroke, it repeats the same thing as before, so it'll pull air into this section. But now what it will do, because there was air in here, it'll now actually force then that air as well into the reservoir. Now, the reservoir is actually under tension the whole time, so where the actual, the pillar of the mechanism is, and there's actually a spring forcing that down the whole time. So all the air that goes in there at the same time, it'll be being forced through this rubber valve here. And basically what that does is through this up and down, you know, fill, push down into here, fill in here, push up into there. That's always under tension. So that's always pushing air into here. It makes sure that at all times in that up and down stroke that this chamber here is filled with air. Now the air release actually into the whistle itself. So this is just the, the whistle. So the whistle actually just goes into this little hole here. And what you'll actually see is there's actually a, a another valve which is which opens and closes with a pin. Now this pin itself, so if you see here, the pin just goes in this little hole. And as that, as that pin goes in and out, what it will do is actually just lift. And it's just a tiny little piece of, just a little piece of plastic there with a thin spring that just keeps tension on there. So, as, all, as this is being constantly filled with air, every time that pin comes in and actually moves that little plate, that'll force there into the whistle. And 
what's actually, what drives this in and out Let me show you, is this lever here. So it's actually this, this part here. So this will have a little rise on it, and that rise just pushes against the pin in and out. And it's these teeth here, or these, these little ridges on the can. Let's see if I can get a better picture here. Those ridges on the can, that's actually what opens and closes, or what moves this lever and then opens and closes the, the valve through that pin. So the valves itself are just made with just this thin rubber. Now this is the rubber, I, I got this from the physiotherapist, so I got a bung shoulder and um, of course I didn't do my shoulder exercises. I just took the rubber and thought, oh goodness, I can use that for a, a myriad of different things. So I chopped it up into different pieces and I'm using it for all, all, over, all over the place for all sorts of different things. Um, but that's what I'm actually using for the, um, the valves. Normally they'd be paper. Um, I just find that this works fine. So the next step is to then cover all of this. Now, normally you would use, uh, so I guess in, traditionally people use um, scythed leather. It's a very, very thin leather. It almost looks like, um, I don't know, like intestine or something like that. It's, but it's very, you know, see-through, incredibly thin. I can't get that here in Australia. I've tried, I've searched. I can't even, um, even find any supplies anywhere for it. So what I actually have had some success with is using umbrella fabric. Um, so in the next video, what I'm going to do is walk you through covering all of this um, and popping it into the actual mechanism. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned something and I'll chat to you soon. Bye.